Ready. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, before we get started, I'll read through kind of an overview of what our role is and kind of the procedures for the meeting. And we'll, we'll try to keep this as, as relaxed as we can, but we do have to have some, some sense of order, you know, with the meeting. Um, we're the 20, 2022 Board of Equalization and Review for Union County, and we've been appointed by the county commissioners to hear any and all taxpayers with respect to concerns and complaints regarding the valuation of their property for tax purposes. Property owners appearing before the Board of Equalization and Review have the right to a fair and equitable hearing. The Board of Equalization and Review has been charged with ensuring that the proper legal principles have been applied in a valuation dispute for tax purposes. So when we get started and the way this will work, when the clerk will call your name and you'll come to the lectern up here at the mic, and the county will locate the property on the monitor so we can all view the property. And you'll just present your information to us, okay? And um, at, after you finish presenting your information, any member of the board will have a chance to ask you questions. Then the county will do the same. They'll present their information to the board. We'll ask questions of the county. Um, after they finish, if you have any additional comments, you will do it at that time. Okay. Uh, if um, after we hear all the cases, we'll then go into the deliberation phase of the of the meeting, and then you'll be notified within 30 days of the board's decision. Um, keep in mind the burden of proof. You know, was on the taxpayer. You know, we we need evidence. Uh, any sales data that you have, it needs to be. 1 1 2022 or prior we can't look at sales data this after 1 1 of 22. Um, if you have your cell phones if you would silence those and any questions if not we'll get started just one second okay morning um, our first uh, our first tab is going to be rescinding a vote from May the 2nd um, the taxpayer did not receive timely notification of our meeting and therefore didn't show up for it the board had um, voted to no change because the taxpayer wasn't here okay okay so the property number is uh, 05015 014A and the property owners are Jeffrey and Tammy Kilball. If we could rescind that vote, we can get started on the second tab. Make a motion to rescind the vote on May 2nd. Second. Got a motion, second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Feel like signs. So motion's carried. Okay, thank you. Um, so the first tab is tab number two, the property. Key is 0501014A. The property owners are Jeffrey Kilball and Tammy Kilball. Mr. Kilball, if you want to come up to the. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, speaking for m missing the uh, second meeting, I never received that information in the mail, written. So I was not aware it uh, was emailed to me, but it ended up in a spam folder because it was not identified as Union County, but it was identified by uh, Bel Belma Blanca. Right. So I didn't catch that in the spam folder either. Okay. Uh, sorry for not being here. Yeah, so we got well, that taken care of for you. So all right. uh, what has happened is the county has uh, sent me a statement that they have re-evaluated the value of my property 
uh, because they had purchased an aerial software that allowed them to take pictures of the property and measurements of the house. And they found out that the house is actually bigger than their records show. So I talked to the individual about it and they explained that to me and I've checked that and it is true. It is true, I agree, that the house is bigger than their records show. Uh, and from this point forward, it should be that. But I have received a corrected bill for taxes on this property uh, for the last three years is what it's explained to me as. It's not definitely written out in front of here. I don't, I've got copies of this if you want to see them. Uh, and I don't feel that their mis I should have to pay for their mistake going backwards. The board's not allowed to make decisions that are uh, retroactive for prior years, and I honestly don't think the tax assessor's office should be allowed to make uh, decisions that are retroactive and bill me for their past mistake. Nowhere in writing have I ever been uh, told that it is my burden of proof to check their math, especially when the math has never been provided to me. I've got last five years of tax statements here. It doesn't tell me what the size of my house is. It just tells me what the value of my house is and pay this much, and I did. Uh, so I honestly don't feel that I should be uh, billed retroactively for the difference in their math discrepancy. That's okay. all I got. I understand where you're coming from. Uh, see if members of the board have questions. Ray, do you have any questions for Mr. <clears throat> Mike? No, sir. Mark? Okay. At this time, let us hear from the county. And we, I don't know if do y'all want to view the property. Are we going to be able to view the property? Do we need to uh, on this one? No, unfortunately, I was unable to break up the software. Okay. Okay. So we're not going to be able to do that. Okay. I don't, I don't dispute the value going forward. Okay. But okay. I don't think I should be charged for previous yeah. years at their mistake. Okay. Let us hear from the county and then yes, uh, we'll have a chance to ask the county questions and then I'll circle back to you with any you know final comments. Thank you, sure. sir. I, I really don't have a whole lot to add. Uh, with the tax right. Right. Okay. You might need to step aside there just yeah. a little bit. She's going. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, that's that's all right. Well, I'm, I'm kind of doing dual hats. Yeah. Um, so as the board knows, uh, the tax office is charged with going back per statute um, to discover unlisted uh, real property or personal property. In this case, we did uh, discover it um, as being unlisted square footage. And um, Van and I were kind of talking about this this morning. When we, when we bought pictometry, um, we made the decision that we weren't going to penalize real property, which by statutes we're allowed to, and we were only going to go back three years and not five years, which by statutes we're charged to do. So the, the taxpayer's argument that we shouldn't do it is contrary to statutes, because the statutes lay out our discovery process for both personal property and real property. I think a, a couple of things there. Um, we did make an administrative decision to only go back three years because that was when we had the first flight. Okay. Um, there, there are two points in statute. Um, 105.312 is the, is the discovery statute, and it says you shall. It doesn't say you may go back and, and give you the timeline for the discovery. Right. There's also one that falls under a concept called immaterial irregularity, which really a square footage correction could fall under and that allows you to go back the full 10 years and we don't do that we that to us that is inequitable from the standpoint of some of the other concepts in the statute because when a taxpayer can request a refund they can go back for five years so we feel like if you can only refund five years you'd only discover five years right. but in this case we actually only discovered the three years okay. and, and the, the statute does put the burden of proof on the taxpayer to ensure that their property is listed accurately, both for real and personal property. Now, 
to the point that we don't charge penalty on real estate discoveries. We don't charge a penalty because there is some dual responsibility there. Um, and this how, Mr. Kilbo, when was your house constructed? Excuse me? When was your house constructed? I don't Roughly 94, 95. Okay. So in 1994, 95, uh, time frame, the, the general statute, if, if I remember correctly, taxpayers had to list their real property. They don't do that anymore. It is now a permanent listing system. So our records are for real estate are updated from building permits. They're updated from um, uh, registered deeds documents and so forth. So we have responsibility in maintaining the real property that's listed in the county. Um, from, from the standpoint of penalty, because we have a dual responsibility, even though this house was built prior to that time, we don't charge those penalties for real estate. Um, e even if we miss an entire house, we don't charge the penalty. Um, but which is different than personal personal property. That's a whole another matter. Um, the but the, there is some there is some responsibility. And the statute is very clear. It doesn't say you may discover. It says you shall discover. Right. Um, so that, and, and so that's why I think the question was as to the legality of the discovery. Um, this board doesn't set the statutes. That that's a general assembly um, function. Um, our office has to has to interpret them and, and abide by them, and that's that's why that's why this process occurs. Okay. Mark, you have any questions for the county? So you're saying that. You didn't charge him a penalty, but the value increased, and therefore there's a higher tax amount on to the property because of the square footage. That's correct. That's correct. The and amount we discovered. Three years. If you look five. at your, if you look at um, this page here in your document, this, this mm -hmm. the discovery notes, it tells you the amount of value that was discovered for each year. Okay. And part of the part of the discovery process, we're also required to, in addition to the discovery process, we're also required to perform reviews of all real property in the county. Pictometry, the aerial imagery there, and the tools that that provides, is a tool that we use in the review process. And if something if something of this nature comes up, if the taxpayer requests, we'll go out there and do a physical inspection. And if we see something that looks off enough from what we're showing our records. We do that inspection anyway. We set that up with taxpayers as often as possible, so that we can actually put boots on, actually put boots on the ground, and, and review that property. Okay. So, but then you also mentioned that if it was in the reverse, which is we assume then, and this pr property here, which is not the case, but that it had less square footage due to that pictometry thing, you realize yes. it's smaller. We, what? the taxpayer has the option to request a refund. Okay. And the county would be required to request yes. a refund. Yes. Would it come before this board? The refunds do not. No, they get to the board of county commissioners. Okay. So, pretty much our hands are tied due to the statute. Is that the, st the statute says the hands are tied. Now, where you do have some leeway, um, just so we have full transparency here. The board has the authority to compromise discovery bills. Um, if you recall, two or three years ago, the Board of County Commissioners delegated that authority down to um, the, the Board of Equalization Review. So you, the, the, the appeal of the discovery, you can hear that. Um, and then you also have the ability to um, compromise the, the tax bill resulting from that discovery. But, to, we're, but we're not, but what are we dealing with? The value that is now placed on this property as of 2021 of 488,000. Mr. Kilball is not disputing the value, correct? I don't dispute the value, right. I just dispute right. being charged. For he, so the three whole years issue is, is about the tax. It's about value. the discovery, yes, sir. Okay, just the back tax. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. And the difference in the amount, okay. So we do have the right to do that. You do have the ability to compromise any portion of that bill you deem necessary. Okay. Mike. Right. Yeah, just to follow up with Mark's comments, uh, we have the authority under 312, I guess, to compromise three years versus five. 
the reason why you're dropping it from five to three is because part of the responsibility should have been the counties to discover that. We're dropping it from five to three because we did this, we found this out through the imagery, through the aerial imagery. Right. Found, found out the discrepancy through, the, or discovered the discrepancy through the aerial imagery. That most recent, that first flight where we had the confirmation of that, even though we know the house was built. Have you added on since 1994? Okay. There's so never we, been an addition to this house. Okay, so we know the house was built in 94. We know that the square footage has always been there. But because we flew that first flight in 2019, we did not want to go back beyond that date for the discovery. So that's the, in 19 is when you did the... Uh, yes. Okay. That's when we flew the first flight with, with peak time tree. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Okay. All right, Mark. Any other questions? All right. Okay. Mr. Cowboy, any, any final comments from you? Uh, yeah, I think we got we, we understand what the issue is here, okay? Yeah, I just don't feel that I should be held responsible for what you're calling an unlisted property. It was done, the county physically measured it in 94, supposedly, and that's mm -hmm. what it was set by. And I don't feel that I should be responsible for their okay. math. Okay. No, I was never notified in writing that it was my responsibility to check their math. Yep. Never was shown the work. You know, your teachers always told you, show the work. Yep. I was okay. never, never saw any of it. So <laughs> okay. I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you Thank you. Thank okay. you. Uh, am like, I done here? You're done. And like I said before, when we go into the deliberation phase, we'll make our decision. You'll be notified within 30 days, you know, of our ruling. Thank you all. Okay. Good afternoon. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to tab number three, the parcel, well, the account number is um, 413422. The company name is Polyrep. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Debbie Gaither. I've worked for Polyreps. I've been there for 23 years. <laughs> okay. So I got tapped to do this. So. Um, are you part of the ownership group or? No, I'm part of the management group. I right. have been. And the owner that you all have been talking to mm -hmm. is out of town and he tapped me to come. So okay. here I am. <laughs> I assume we're good with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, we're dealing, what we're appealing is the additional taxes that were levied on us after they came in and did some discovery. Um, the reason we're appealing it is that we were under the impression that we had an exemption on all our recycling equipment because we're a plastic recycler. What we did not know was that this was something that had to be renewed. We thought once we were exempt, we were exempt. So if we had known we were supposed to be renewing this, we would have been yeah. doing it appropriately. Okay. We know now. <laughs> okay. Since then, since we found this out, we've had the Department of um, Environmental, whatever it is for the state, in. She's looked at our equipment. And we understand what we need to do going forward. Um, and then we did attempt to appeal this. The appeal arrived one day late because of COVID, and the person that was responsible for doing the appeal actually had been out with COVID, so that was why the appeal ended up being one day late. Um, and so we tried to talk to somebody about that, the fact that that was why it was late, but we were told it was late, it was late. So, um, but, um, and so we feel, we feel if we have to, to pay this tax, which, or if the tax needs to be assessed, which is to us questionable, but um, that we think it would be fair for you to waive all the penalties and interest because we were operating under the um, assumption that everything we were doing was correct, that we had you know, followed all the rules we needed to follow and all our equipment that was supposed to be exempt because we are a recycler was, was covered. And like I said, we've since found out that we need to be doing this on an ongoing basis. And the state has told us they'd come in probably like once a year now and look at the equipment and see what, what and or if we need to add to this. So that's, that's pretty much our, okay. our argument. So. Okay. 
Let me see if uh, members from the board have any further okay. questions. Uh, Ray, you have. Uh, what kind of equipment is it? It's all different types of equipment because we're a plastic recycler. We bring in scrap and um, I mean things like detergent bottles and stuff. Uh, we size reduce them, uh, which means we put them through like a grinding machine and make them into what looks like flake almost. And then that flake goes through um, another machine and turns it into, it's called a pulverizer, turns it almost into like a powder. Right now our main customer is composite decking board. So, um, and they're really into being green. So um, we, we bring in lots of material for them. We reduce it into this blend that's almost like a powder. We ship it in the bulk trucks all the way to Ohio. So okay. it's, we have several different types of- Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Mike? Well, when you, when you put all this equipment in, I'm assuming you had to apply for an exemption or did it just- Well, that was the thing. At the very beginning when we moved in, when we started getting into where we would have qualified for the exemption, we did apply for the exemption and it was granted. What we didn't realize was that it was an ongoing process. We thought once we applied, we were exempt and that was it. Was that a county uh, application or was that just, uh, who, who did you apply to? The state. The state. And, and they, didn't, I, they didn't tell you that you were no. have to do that. If, if, well, with that being said, the person that did that is no longer with us. If they told her that, it was never told to anybody else, nobody in the ownership, nobody else, because, um, I mean, she just did her job and she didn't always share stuff. So I don't know, I can't tell you for a fact that she was told. And uh, then I'm not so sure based on, I actually wasn't privy to all the conversations, but I was under the impression that maybe the county had not received the information from the state that showed we were exempt, was that true? Or does anybody know? We'll speak to some of, we'll speak to that one. Okay. 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 That's Mark? How long has this been going on? Well, they've been in business since 1985, but we've been in this building doing this since well, 23 years. We've been in this building probably 21 years, so. Okay, but I, I was I was thinking more about the equipment. Or you said that was well. They've gone. They went back to 2016 on the assessment. Okay. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure how to answer your question because I don't know uh, when she got the original exemption. Okay. So what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to figure out by my question is, you said someone had you know did the work, got right, it approved right. the first time then you know it's no longer with the company right. and then today we're here and we're right. talking about this i really I, don't know when she originally did it i don't know like are we talking two years ago three? oh no we're talking over 10 years ago 10 years ago yeah and then all of a sudden right now you find out that the county is they decided that they were going to do an assessment. We got a letter that they were going to do the assessment. And they found all this and it wasn't approved and so they went back, uh, I'll find out from- To 2016, they went back to. Okay, thank you. My phone. Okay. That part I do know. It okay. <laughs> kind of answers the question I had is how far back. Yeah. Okay. And, and to us, that if we have to pay the assessment, which we, we're not really happy with, but if we have to pay the extra assessed taxes, we will pay them. The part we have really have a problem with is the penalty Penalties. and the interest. Okay. So. At this time, let us hear from the county, then I'll circle back to you with okay. any final comments you might want to make. So is that you, Phil? Or? No, it's no, Robin. It's, it's Robin. 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 I'll provide a little bit of context while she's getting ready. Again, this, this centers around the audit issue. Right. And this is where we go back on business, personal property, current plus five. I, mean, I spoke to the owner of the company. Um, multiple times regarding right. the audit. Um, Robin's got the timeline of how everything happened. Um, the, the issue that led to the discovery, um, as, as, the, as the taxpayer spoke to, was, was there was a process for getting your exempt, equipment exempted. And I think it was 99 or 2000 when I went back and looked at the original records they had a dinner certification for a million dollars worth of equipment. It might not even have been a million dollars worth of equipment. 
In 22 years since then, they've added several million dollars of equipment, never listed it, never applied for exemption. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that responsibility is on the taxpayer. If they're in the recycling business, they've got people on staff that know that they should be listing that equipment because you don't acquire assets and you don't list it and, and not list it for, for property tax purposes. Um, and then if, if you're in that business for recycling, which we've got a number of them in the county that, that we deal with on a regular basis, and there's a very methodical process you have to go through a dinner certific dinner certification process once you get that then you provide that documentation to the county that the lack of that and the lack of listing the property is what led to the discovery and robin can talk to, the, to speak to the rest of the process good morning good morning <clears throat> So as, as the uh, taxpayer stated, we uh, sent out an information letter on April 14th of 2021, alerting the taxpayer that we would be doing an audit. Um, we randomly pick organizations to audit on an annual basis. We use an outside auditing firm, um, Tax Management Associates, to conduct these audits. And we always send out a letter to the, to the business saying, hey, get ready, we're, getting, we're gonna do an audit. Um, on July 23rd of 2021, we sent a certified copy of discovery notice mailed to the taxpayer. This is the letter that the taxpayer indicated that the person who received it was, had COVID. We have documentation showing that somebody signed for that letter on, um, on July 26th. So they had that letter in possession. They made, um, the mail made two attempts before then to deliver it. There was nobody at the business, probably because of you know COVID protocol. But we do have documentation saying that a person signed for it on the 26th. With appeal of a discovery notice, the taxpayer has 30 days from the date on the letter to appeal that discovery. So the date on the letter was July 23rd. Again, they received it on the 26th. Um, we didn't receive the appeal um, for that for that discovery until let me double check my dates. We received it in the office on August the twenty fifth. Can I ask her a question? Yes. Sure. So the twenty third, twenty sixth, somebody signed it. Y'all went to audit. Right? I no, mean, this is, did they let you in the building to look at their equipment? I, I skipped all of that. Yes, we, we successfully completed the audit. This is when the was that? It, you know, it was like 20, 20. Yeah, it, it was probably in the beginning of July 2021. Because on July 23rd is when we sent to the taxpayer our discovery of audit findings. So okay. the audit all is that complete. information, yeah, that you found. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And we always send it certified letter. Got it. I'm back on page. Okay. Okay, so they received the, they signed for the certified letter and they sent back to us overnight um, a reply asking to appeal the discovery findings on um, August 25th is when we received it. Their, their notification was dated August 24th. The, the whole point with this timeline is they had 30 days to respond. Mm -hmm. And even though the taxpayer says that the appeal arrived in the office one day late, they sat on it for over three weeks. We made several attempts after we got the appeal to notify the taxpayer because when we get an appeal to a discovery of an audit, we do like real property, we try to do a little bit of an informal and say, hey, let's, let's talk about what you're appealing. Um, the things that they appealed were that they were 100% solid waste recycling plant, um, that there were several assets that were being double taxed. Um, they didn't agree with our methodology for supplies. And they, they um, said they apologized for the delay in reporting. We are a small company and relied previously on the office manager who had filed for years but was discharged due to misconduct. Nowhere in the appeal did they indicate that the person who should have responded was out of the office because of COVID. 
Um, their fifth statement is going forth. All business personal properties will be listings will be filed timely by our CPA. A little bit of a backstory on this. Um, we have records back to 2010 for this organization. Um, looking back over the discovery period, which was from um, 2020 to 2016, of those five years that we looked at, they only listed twice. We had to force assess them three times. So they, they were not doing what they needed to do as a business and reporting to us on an annual basis. Normally what we do is if we force assess a company for three to five years, we will audit them. That's one of the reasons why we went out and audited them because if they're not filing, we don't know what they have. Now during the audit process, so here we are within 2021, during the audit process, um, the company realized that they needed to make application for exemption and get the pollution control abatement equipment um, certified by DEQ. All of that was accomplished in about August of 2021. Okay, in November of 2021, I brought to the board their late application because that's when they filed was August of 29, asking the board to accept their late application. So their pollution control ab abatement equipment that was certified by DEQ in 2021 could be exempt from taxes. And we did that. And by statute, I could only do it for one year because they made the application and I brought it to the board and asked for you to, you know, sorry, I didn't mean to touch the computer, yeah. asked for you to accept the late application which we did. So going forward with that, in October 19th of 2021 is when we created the tax bills for the audit discovery. So we're, we're really doing two things simultaneously here. We're dealing with the 2021 taxes and the exemptions and the certifications, but we're also dealing with the audit discovery, okay? So we sent the tax bills and we, and we mailed um, them for the audit discovery. In April 29th of 2022, the taxpayer requested a compromise of that tax bill. So similar to the case that we just heard, the taxpayer is requesting that we compromise the discovery tax bill. The tax bill right now outstanding is $42,801.18 of that, uh, let me get the breakdown. I want to say approximately $13,000 is um, late list penalties. I'll let Van speak to interest because that's, that's a collector responsibility and, and I don't know that off the top of my head. Yeah, the late list penalties are $13,000. $233.79. It's always been... And that goes back how far? Is that... That's for the discovery period, so that would be five years. Five years, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the, if, if we're looking at compromising the tax bill, if that's the information that the board wants to pursue, um, $13,000 of the original amount of $40,763.03 is late list penalty. Robin, is that $13,000 even? $13,233.79. Okay. Penalties over that five year period of time. Got it. Right. Okay. Penalties assessed per statute. Okay. And again, because personal property is an annual listing requirement, mm -hmm. we don't have any dual responsibility like we do with real property. It is the business owner's responsibility to list what they have every year. It's an annual listing period. And just to make sure I'm following, I mean, so you, you got a total tax bill of about 42, 13,000 of its late list penalties, and the 29 that's left is tax. 
over so what period? That over the five years. Over the five years. Yes. Okay. Except for twenty twenty. We have sixteen through twenty. Right. Okay. Now we'll talk about the interest for a moment. When was it when was that bill generated? Um, we have a statement of taxes that was produced at the end of May, May twenty fourth. Of 2022. 2022, okay. And the interest that I have on this statement is $2,038.15. Okay. So speaking to interest, um, this bill was orig originally created in July, August timeline, time frame of last year. Mm -hmm. It would have been due by January 5th of this year because even though it covers five prior years, it's mm -hmm. considered a 2021 tax bill. Mm -hmm. So it would be due by January 5th, 2022. Statute provides no remedy for waiving interest. The taxpayer has the option when they, it's just like when you appeal your real estate value uh, from a revaluation or any other year. You have the option to pay all the tax bill. You can pay part, the portion that you think you owe once it passes the due date. Um, once it passes the due date, the interest will accrue on the balance is unpaid. Or you cannot pay any of it. That's your choice. If you lose your appeal, you have to pay all the interest that's accrued because interest is simply time value money. Yeah. Um, now, the part of the interest that will be released, if you will, is if the board compromises any portion of this tax bill, late list penalties or otherwise. So then the interest would recalculate based on the balance that's owed after that adjustment is made. So some of the interest will change if you compromise any of the bill. But there is, from the tax office standpoint, there is no ability or statutory authorization to waive interest in any circumstance other than a bill that is postmarked prior to the due date or the payment is postmarked. And that Ms. was not the case. Mr. Chairman, if I can approach, yeah. I have. So if, if you were to waive, if you were to waive penalty and it's just a rough I, I have a breakdown so the, the tax as it stands would be twenty seven thousand um, five hundred and twenty nine dollars okay. so see on the statement down here I have tax okay. and then I yeah. have interest, interest and then and that cost is, penalties. is the is the penalties right. for the stolen for the total outstanding mm -hmm. balance I show that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I apologize. Yeah, that's fine. No, that's good. I, I was making some notes. If, if you were to, if you were to adjust and, and grant the taxpayer's request to at least compromise the penalty, um, the interest amount, roughly, that would reduce on that is, is close to eight. It's close to seven hundred fifty-nine dollars. Right. Okay. Did I get to everybody with questions for the county, Rick? Uh, Robin, uh, the equipment that's being discovered, you mentioned that you can only exempt one year uh, certification. Right. The, the way the uh, exemption application or the exemption statute is written is that the year the exemption is filed, okay, so filed with the county, that's the AV-10, um, that's the year in which the exemption is applied to the applicable equipment. Now, you probably remember from Mecklenburg, when we're dealing with pollution control or, or anything that's certified by DEQ, they had a, a, a long period of time. Um, I would say about five years ago that it would take them to certify equipment. So it's critical that the business would make that application in the year that they want to be exempt and then DEQ would certify that equipment almost a year, year and a half later. In, in this case, um, DEQ is pretty much on top of everything, so they made the application and the equipment got certified pretty close together. So, so I, I took care of that for 2021. So the other, the other years that you're discovering that aren't exempt on this pollution stuff, they never filed with Diener for exemption I have, I have no record um, in my office of an application or certification with DEQ. Okay. So you had no choice in that right. discovery process. Right. Okay. And then just to make sure I'm clear, when on an annual basis, just say they have all the exemptions in place with DEQ, 
do is what what's their responsibility each year after they get the exemption good question so yeah. let's say here we are in 2022 and they they purchase a piece of equipment this year mm -hmm. they would have to contact DEQ get that equipment certified they already have application with us so mm -hmm. they don't need to make another application but they do need to provide us with a certification from DEQ on that new equipment any new purchase has to be certified by DEQ okay. and then we have to receive that certification so if they bought a piece of equipment today had it certified you know before the end of the year provided us with the certification when they file in January they would mail in the certification along with their listing saying here here's the cost of the equipment here's our new acquisition and here's the certification that goes with it and we would automatically make an exempt okay now at the same time if the company files with the state for certification and for some reason the state's late and they've got that thing filed with them can you still discover that even though it's the state problem yes yes because the because the the state has a date on their certification on when they applied for it so again using your scenario let's say they they bought the equipment in 2022 they apply for certification at DEQ, DEQ's backed up. They don't actually do the certification until 2023. Then they provide that certification to us and then we would exempt that equipment. Okay, one last question. This stuff that's being discovered, is it currently certified and for go forward? Yes. Okay. And then to add on to the question I had, if they don't make any additions or acquisitions of equipment once they get that exemption they don't have to do anything on an annual basis with the county or do they no they don't okay they, they only they have to continue to list right All not right. for the exemption but they have to annually list that property they have to show they still have it right okay that's yeah. because of course even though it's exempt property we do have the full market value and we would have depreciated every year so that exemption would go down right and they were or were not doing that they were, they not, were not doing right. that. Okay. They hadn't listed or applied for DEQ right. certification. Okay. Okay. Mark, do you have another question? So you said like in the last five years, right? There were like three occasions. Where yeah, we forced to assess them um, three years. Yes. You know, I can give you those dates. We forced to assess them in 2021. Okay. We forced to assess them in 2020. We forced to assess them in 2019. In 2018, we, we received the listing on 426. On, in 2017, we listed it, we received the listing on 22, and then we forced assessed them in 16. I, I didn't go past the discovery period, um, you know, the audit, but I, I can if you want me to. No, I'm, I'm just trying to understand it. So during that time period, 16, 17, up to mm -hmm. 21, when you said you forced, that means right. Like so what the forced assessment does is we we annually send out a listing form, form to all businesses. Okay. Okay, across the county, right. individual business, mm -hmm. everybody gets a listing form. If we don't receive that listing form back, yeah. then we we send out a discovery notice. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's called a non-lister letter, and okay. we're required by statute okay. to send out that letter saying, hey you didn't list, mm -hmm. this is the value that we have. Now, some counties will, will jump up that amount. They'll add 25% to it because they wanna get the taxpayer's attention mm -hmm. and, and make them list. We used to do that um, and we did it to Pilgrim's Pride because Pilgrim's Pride didn't list for a number of years. Then when they finally listed, Marshville lost a ton of value. So I, I made the decision way back then to not do it mm -hmm. because it, you know, it, it can really impact the small towns. And I didn't, I didn't see it as being worthwhile. Okay. So you force list them, then they filled the form out. Is that right? That's how it works? Like in 218, 219? No, they 20. didn't do anything in 2018, 19, and 20. They didn't even respond to no, no. no. In, in the years that I forced assess them 
So okay. I sent out the listing. I got sent out the non-lister letter. You got, got nothing. Okay. Sent out the tax bill, got and it. they paid the tax bill. But then don't forget, the only equipment I was pulling was, was what they had listed previously. I mean, we're talking like two hundred thousand dollars. I got you. That's so I, I can see in in their mind mm -hmm. that hey, they're only taxing me for this, and this is all that I think I should be taxed on. Mm -hmm. But they, they, you know, they, they didn't follow the exemption statute. They didn't follow the listing statute. You know, it's their responsibility, whether it's exempt or not exempt, mm -hmm. to list all personal property, period. And then you had the, dis you went and audited, and then you found all this other equipment which wasn't approved being, you know. Okay, I understand. And then we worked with them in 2021. Yep. To, to exempt that equipment, okay. but but we couldn't go retro during the discovery period, during okay. the audit, because right. they made application in 2021. So I mean we we've really Been over and and they they are a small company. They've had issues in the office. I mean I I understand all of that, and that's why we were trying so hard to work with them, mm -hmm. and we'll continue to work with them. I mean once we find companies like this. And realize that they need, you know, maybe more hands-on. Mm -hmm. We do it. We'll sit down with them on an annual basis, and we'll go over their their listing and make sure that they're in compliance. So when we do audit them, we don't have a big discovery. Got it. Do you do you know as the, the person whose responsibility it was to file these was that an in-house person or a no, CPA not. firm? She works for, so our, our owners own three companies, actually. Wait. Yeah, step up to the mic um, so we can hear you. Our owners own uh, several companies. She works, she used to work for our CPA. She has been hired by our owners, but she now works for their color company in Greenville, South Carolina. So because she's got this accounting background, all this stuff gets deferred to her. So this letter that you delivered. Um, I was probably on vacation when you tried to deliver it and then the office was closed. So it finally somebody was there, they signed for it. When I, as soon as I got it, I scan it and I email it to her and to the owner that, that you probably talked to, David. Um, so in these years that you said she didn't file, same thing. When I get the listing form, I, I scan them, I send them to her. I, since they hired her, it became no longer my responsibility to deal with mm -hmm. any of that. Okay. So I had, I had no idea that you had to force, force these. So that was news. I was shocked when I heard that. <laughs> so I'll address that with, I'll address that, but that's nothing I can fix now. So, okay. um, and then this thing about the lady that was terminated, um, she was the one that did this original thing for the exemption and we, so once she had done it we assumed like I told you before we didn't know we needed to do this every year and get everything updated so that's where I'm not disputing that we're not disputing now that we should have done it we just didn't know we should be doing it so we do know that now so um, okay that's you got a communication problem there yeah we that which right. now we're going to all right, thank you. Now you're going to take care of it, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ms. Gaither. If I may just add one point. Um, on the Diener or DEQ, because they changed names, um, application, it, it does say that you, if you buy or delete equipment, that you update the application. Again, it's a form. There's a lot of writing on it. I mean, I get it. But, but it, is, it is spelled out that this is one of your requirements. We hold poly reps to the exact same standard that we hold all pollution control abatement entities to. We're, we're not treating them any differently than we would treat anybody else. Everybody else has to put in their application. Everybody else has to update it. Everybody else has to have the DEQ certification. And we do audit both our exemptions and, you know, our listings, our personal property listings. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Oh, well, I'm next. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Ms. Gaither, I, I said I'd circle back to you, but I know you, you made some comments. Any other? Um, I guess not. Uh, like you said, we do have some communication issues, which I will now address right. because, like I said, I get, the, I get all this stuff and I send it on to the person that's supposed to be responsible for doing it. This year, I made sure right. that it got done. I kept sending her emails reminding her it was due, and then I, and then I said, so you either need to file or file for an extension. So she filed. I filed for the extension and then sent her the information that said, here's your extension. You need to do this by then. Unfortunately, because she is the accountant, that's, that's, I can't file it. If it was up to me, I'd say, yes, let, let's go out here with the operations manager. We'll go through this and we'll file it, but right. it wasn't up to okay. me. So, so I'll get the communication issue taken care of. And then, like I told you, the, our big thing here with the DEQ was that we did not realize that on a yearly basis we needed to, to be doing that. Which she made, she explained it very well when she came in, the lady from DEQ. So we, we do understand this now, and so it's, it should not be an issue going forward. But like, like she said, the lady that was terminated, we thought she had taken care of everything, and that we were all good to go, and that right. we, so. Okay. Come back to bite us now, but there's nothing we can do about okay. it. Maybe. Well, so. appreciate the detail you shared with us, uh -huh. and uh, so. like I said before, we'll go into the deliberation phase, and you'll be notified of the board's decision within 30 days. Okay. okay and like I said, we and I understand what he's saying about the interest, um, but we would have gladly paid these taxes if we known we weren't doing everything we were, you know, that we weren't following the rules and mm -hmm. hadn't done everything like we were supposed right. to. So. The, the problem was because we didn't understand and we thought we were operating correctly, it was more the interest and penalties that we had an issue with. I mean, we're not happy that we have to pay taxes on stuff that we thought was exempt. Right. But if we, if we have to, we have to. We just had an issue with the, the interest penalties. and the penalties, which like doubled. Right. And it's not only you, the city, city of Monroe is now waiting to see what you all rule because we also have 30 something thousand dollars stemming from all of this too with them. Right. So what you decide affects what they do. Right. <laughs> so. I got you. Just, just, so, just so to help make sure you understand, the interest is not retroactive. The interest is only from January 5th of this year. Okay. Well, yeah. So we didn't go back to 2016 and charge interest because it's considered a Well, the way, tax the reason bill. I said, I get what you're saying. I, I said that because we're looking at the way the bill is right. itemized right. and it makes it look like yep. there's interest on every Year. So that and, was, and, and cumulatively, there would be because there's a tax bill, quote tax bill for every right. year, but it's all considered a 21 tax bill. Okay. So, so, okay. so but that's, okay. I guess that's it. And if, if they compromise any portion of it, that part of the interest will be released also. Okay. 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 Thank all you. Right. Thank, thanks yeah. for the detail. Thank you. Did you need anything I can move on? Yeah. I think we're good there. Anybody have any? We're all good there. Okay. Yeah. So moving on to tab number four, um, the account number is 411466 and the property owner is Douglas Kaziah. All the blood rushes down to yeah. Um, David Kaziah is, uh, I mean, Douglas Kaziah, sorry, is um, a farmer in Union County. We did do an audit on his property. He is a self-filer. Um, I, I, I had Barb speak with him yesterday, and because it's a really busy time for farmers, I told him I would present his information on his behalf so he didn't have to take the time to come in this morning. Um, Mr. Kaziah was, was um, very cooperative during the audit. Um, the equipment that we picked up during his audit discovery was equipment that he, he didn't realize he needed to, to list on an annual basis. He's fine with the taxes on the unlisted equipment. What he's asking for is that we waive the late list penalty um, for the unlisted personal property discovery because he is a self-filer. It's been the stance of the tax office historically that if the, um, if the property owner is a self-filer, 
that we, we give them the benefit of the doubt and, and we do waive the late list penalties. Normally, um, we don't waive late list penalties if a CPA is the one who's doing the filing because they're the ones who should know, you know what to list and what not to list. Uh, and I assume they just get it that one time. I mean, if they miss it yes, the next time. Yes, one time. time. Yeah. And yeah. we put a note in the system, so yeah. five years, we <laughs> audit him again, and we have late list penalties. He that this them. is, yeah, he's yeah. got to pay them. But this is the first time for him? Yes, it okay. is the first time for him. Got it. Uh, okay. Any questions? Do I don't any? believe so. Anybody have any questions? I make a motion we yeah. um, do away with the late list penalty. So I have a motion to uh, waive the late list penalty from Mark. Second. Got a second from Ray. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those like sign. Motion's carried. Thank you. Dealt with that one. Okay, so let's go back to tab number two, because we took care of tab number one when we were sended. And this is. Um a real property discovery the only thing i forgot to ask when he was when he when he mentioned he doesn't see the square footage on his tax bill every year don't you see isn't that information in there mm -hmm. well, no the good. square footage is not on your tax bill okay nobody would okay your values on it but the your values on it but yeah they just wait for that tax bill that's what they wait for. right i don't know, I don't know. um Somebody talk. Yeah. I, I'll be more than happy. Yeah, I reckon. And then a, another question too. He didn't. After all the rebounds we had, has anybody met? Didn't we measure about every property at some point between? Um, we're definitely make every attempt to get on properties, but there yeah. are there are still a fair subset that we have not. Have not. Okay. That, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, this is one of them. We discovered that the house was mismeasured through a, a software tool. Right. And when did that stop? When did that tool begin? 19. In 19, so y'all been zooming down on people? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you like knowing that, Mark? I'm sure they do. Um, but under his circumstances, I, I just kind of, he didn't have anything to do. He didn't do anything wrong, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, He's fine with it going forward. I think he was just yeah. appealing New appeal. 20, 21 and back. Correct. Appealing the discovery. Yes. Right. 21 prior. Yeah. 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 Went backwards on him. So that's what he's appealed or he's wanted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got to make a motion to rescind the, what is it, penalty for three years, whatever it is. Discovery. Discovery. Right. You know what I'm talking yeah. about from. He's good with it going forward, but anything prior to 20. 22. So 2021, 2020, 2019. Yeah. It's what we're saying no penalties. And no, no, yeah. Right? Uh, that's what I'm. Okay. Let's, let's clarify that. There are no penalties because it's real estate on this okay. one. Okay. So what he's asking is for a compromise of the discovery. You have the authority to compromise any portion of that discovery. All right. All half, 10%, whatever you deem necessary. That's what you're ruling on on this. Yeah. But the discovery that I'm talking about is what you went back three years on. Right. That's what that's what that's we're talking what, about. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm doing is saying he shouldn't have to pay. Okay. So, so your, your motion is to compromise and to release the entire discovery. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's my motion. Yeah. So I have a motion. I mean, if he's going. To right. To. Uh, I don't think we ought to compromise at all. I mean, property's actually there. Okay, that's what that's what I want y'all to talk. Please, mm -hmm. I'm all for it. I'm, I need to hear other people's opinion. Now they're reckon the right way to do it though. We got a motion, so we need we're in to, discussion. Yeah. Discuss. So now discussion. we're in discussion. Okay. So let's hear it. So you're saying because the county had that picture done, he didn't, and they're going back three years from that to pay the extra value on the house due to the increase in square footage. Correct. I right. think one, one thing to keep in mind for your discussion is this portion of that property, even though it's small, has not been taxed since 1994 when the house was built. 
So you're talking 30 years that he's had it for ta without taxes on it, or 27 almost. And to add do to that, you know how many, uh, do you know how many square feet are in your property or your home? I do. I'm going to be honest with you. I have a good assumption, but you know, somebody takes a picture of it. I didn't walk out there in my house and measure every nook and cranny. I what, have, what's you so know, what's I, the square footage of the discovery? Yeah. Well, I honestly couldn't tell you. I just have before and after values. I think we have the. Um, There's some kind of drawing in here, but I didn't. It, yeah. it looked like a. It looked. Yeah, it was, I have the after drawing. I don't have the before. It's, yeah. it's a porch that's eight foot by three foot. Okay. It, it's a porch, but you also see the, the 90 and the 46. Those have been extended. It was much wider. The house itself was much wider than we originally had. Yeah, under roof house is big. Yeah, under roof was that's considerably what, larger. I mean, yes, we had a porch, but that was a very small yeah, that's, piece of it. Yeah, yeah that wouldn't be easy. It was just the house had been, um, was just much longer than we had listed previously. And I was, I was kind of hoping to have a before yep. list sketch in here, but I don't. Okay. But he's not seeing the square footage each year. When he sees his bills, he does not see the square footage, although it is readily available with the sketch on it. But he's not, I mean, if he's just no, getting his bill, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like we don't send a sketch of your property. Yeah, you like yeah. That's kind of what I'm getting, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, now, if, it, if the square footage was on his tax bill, that'd be different. Maybe. I know. Because, yeah. you but, know, you really don't know. You, you know, it's just a new assessed value. Yeah. You know, it's a new assessed value. Right. Well, it's gone up, tax, you know, everything yeah. goes up. But it's not yeah. the concept of your house being totally off. Right. But we already compromise two years out of five. Correct? Is that right? Correct. The county we did. just went back as far as the software, the picture we got from the software. We, re, we know it's been there day one. But yeah. We're just we could have gone. The software took a picture, we're going from that point forward. We, we could have gone as much as five years. We could have gone as much as ten. Or ten. But we only went yeah. three. That's a good point, too. Now, is he asking for for just the penalties there or is, the whole There spirit? is no penalty. He doesn't want to, he does not want the discovery bill. He okay. just, it's just the discovery. But he's willing to pay what the new value is now on point it. Forward. And and he only wants to go point forward. He doesn't want to pay the past three years. That's, that's what I was getting at. Is, no, I understand yeah. that. But I just want to make sure we understood that we already gave up two years and another 10 is. Uh, well, if, if you look at since the house was built in 1994 yeah. to 2018. He's really sick. Man. Okay. All right. Good deal. <laughs> I guess yeah. I can't. But we, do you we, can look at the whole bill or you can look at a portion of the bill. That That is your. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I can. That's a good discussion. I mean, good stuff. So my, my motion got a second, and that's why we went into discussion. No, your motion no, you, did not get a second. Yeah. So I can send my motion. If, if that's what well, you no, desire. You need, you, need, you need to vote on the motion. Okay, we need to get a second. You need to get a second on the motion and then vote on it, regardless of how that vote goes. Okay. Yes. So it may not get a second. There you go. Okay. Right. So, so I have a motion from Mark. Then you would need Mark. to do a substitute motion. Yeah. Yep. Instead of voting on the original. I just motion. want to make sure we're following okay. the rules. So currently, I have a motion from Mark to waive the discovery value for those for 2021 years. back to 2019. Okay, so do I have a second? So there's no second. No, sir. So the motion fails. 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 Question. So that's dealt with. Yep. Now we start back over. Thank you. Okay. Question. Okay. Can we waive just the penalties? There is no penalties. There is no penalties. There is no penalties. Yeah, there, there is, is no penalties. penalties. It's just value. This is, this just, is value. value. just value. Okay. This is a compromise request. Yeah, the camp, as you said before, the county's already compromised, you know, to a degree. But, that, but that's irrelevant. We only, we only went, it's relevant, but it's not. Yeah. We only went back to three years. Right. He has requested that you compromise or release these last the three years that are out there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, what's the pleasure of the board?
talked. Sure. We, we, I think we've talked through all the detail. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'll, I'll make a motion to fly out of here first. We assess two, 2021 and waive the other two years. That's that's your discussion, not mine. Yeah, so, what Ray, you're proposing, one year. As opposed to three. As opposed to three. I second. So have that motion. Mike, second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. So motion's carried. Make carried sure we're clear. discovery value. We're going to discovery for 2021. And then going forward. And not 19 and 20. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, that Robin. Okay, thank you for clarifying it. Yeah. I made that one very complicated, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to think about the next one. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Go Hold on, let room. me get there. Yeah. Okay, so the uh, next tab is tab number three. The um, Taxpayer's name is Polly Reps Inc. The parcel, uh, the account number is uh, 413422. Okay. I have, uh, I mean, to They've a point, you know, sympathize to a degree. To a, de to a degree, you know. Well, what I'm hearing. Every bit of this falls on them, mm -hmm. their failure to do what they should have been doing, mm -hmm. whether it was a bad employee or whatever the case. Mm -hmm. And they've been all of them, and they've been talked to, and that, that's that's it for me. On and, the, and on and on and on. It seems to be a recurring thing year by year. Um, How long have they been in business? We have records back to 2010. She said they were. Okay, but they, okay. Yeah. I'd like to just make a comment. Robin, you did an excellent job explaining all this to me again, refreshing my memory. Oh, yeah. Excellent job. Yeah. Thank you, Ray. Mark? Thanks, Mark. Okay, so this is, this is based on, from the appeal, they, don't want to pay penalties. Which amounts to about 13 grand. Well, the, the request is to compromise the discovery tax bill, to, just like we were just talking about. Okay. Okay, so we. have so a total we, tax bill of about 42 grand. Right. right. And that okay. includes the um, the base tax amount of what what's on the piece of paper, about 27,000. Right. And then. Lateless penalties of about 13,000. Well, and interest of about 2,000. In 2000. As Van stated, nothing can be done about the interest. Yep. The penalties, as as we did for the farmer, could be waived, and that is something the board has has done in the past. Mm -hmm. um, the taxes on a discovery we for personal property we don't normally compromise don't, because it is an annual listing process. Okay. Well, what do y'all think? That's a pretty good sized company, uh, I believe. It, they've been in business for a long time. And I mean, they got, they, this guy got COVID, that, I didn't, I still don't understand who's supposed to be refiling this stuff. So I make a motion, no change. We just accept the discovery and with penalties. The penalty and, and interest, of okay. course. Right. And just so we have a motion. Did, did, did yeah. you make the motion? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have a motion to uh, bill stands as is. Right. You know. Except the discovery. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. And so we, we need a second. Have a motion. I need a second. We need a second. Second. There is a second. second. Uh, any discussion, Mr. Chairman? I just I will add one thing. We did as an office recommend 
as a possible compromise to waiver the penalties. Mm -hmm. so make sure you can take that as consideration. Right. So we're in the discussion phase. How much is the penalty? Thirteen thousand two hundred thirty-seven dollars and forty-four cents. That's a lot of penalties. Thirteen thousand two hundred thirty-seven and forty-four cents. Yeah. Because the, so the way that the way the penalties are calculated, if you go back to the beginning, first year of the discovery. Any tax assessed on that first year, because it's 10% each year, is 60% penalty on that first year. And then it tears down. Fifth year is 50%, fourth year, 40%, 30, 20, 10 to, to the most current year. So the penalty in a big audit, penalties can be a substantial amount. Mm -hmm. We've seen some much larger than this that have been waived, some that haven't. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to the board's discretion. That was our really only recommendation is a compromise on this one but it's up to the board to make that decision i want to make sure y'all are aware that we did make that suggestion it's just up to y'all to make that decision okay so well, how do we back up before we're well we can just, just, we can just let it die just vote you, just vote no just, yeah, so we're in the discussion phase so i can just call it i mean yeah. all those in favor say aye so the motion dies correct yes and yet you have to ask how many vote no how many vote no i have three voting no okay okay all right now we're getting we need to so that that motion has dealt with and it's died right okay. so now we can go back into additional discussion and make another motion okay so on the penalties you discovered a, a mistake right so it goes back five years. It's current plus five. Current year plus five. Plus five. So let's say in year 2016. We've got to use numbers. Okay, that's what I'm, I'm, so I'm going to do. I want to do this. So let's say in 2016, which is the oldest year. Yes. You discover a thousand dollars in value. Your penalty yes. on that is going to be sixty percent. So that's going to be a six hundred dollar penalty on thousand dollars in there value. You go. There you go. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, sixty percent of the tax is not the value. So, if, if if so, this is the discovery. This is their original value. Okay, and you, okay, this new, is the new value. Okay, so this is the net amount that I value that I picked up yeah. per year. So if you go all the way down to sixteen, okay, you're talking that, then you got depreciation. So do this. Is this like ten percent? Then the so this, 50, is, this is sixty percent. 60, but it's 60% 60 of the CDs. tax bill, not the value. Yeah, I see it on the page yeah. now. Okay. I see how that works. And see, we didn't do anything for 2021 because we ac accepted their late application. So that's why it starts off at 2020. Okay. So current would have been 2021, but because we accepted okay. their late okay. application, that's, why it's not it, that's off the books. And they paid everything this year for 21. Yes. Okay. And then during these years, they just never let y'all know what right. new equipment here's, they got. Here's where we, we starting in 16, we forced, they filed, they filed. Paying Nineteen. every time. Yep. Yep. Paying every time. But when you forced them and they, and they paid in these times, did they add any new equipment? No. Did they just say, well, yeah. or they just wrote a check when you sent the bill? Right. They just wrote a check. Right. They, but yes, they, they added that much new equipment in 16. But it wasn't approved by the state to be right. exempt. Yeah, it had right. not been. And, and that's the state what doesn't. You hit them up for is it wasn't exempt. Yeah. Then you get to 21, same thing. Now all that stuff was exempt by the state, and you didn't charge. Or you know what I'm saying? Right. I so I do know what's going on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do. But the state qualified. They didn't it. think they had to refile. With they the didn't state. think they, they had, had to list they had to exempt make a equipment. One-time filing with the state. Right. And, and there is, yeah, yeah, in statutes. Um, one time is only what there's there's one entity that can do one time right okay. church, that's churches huh churches yeah churches yeah okay, religious so exemptions are only one time so hang on one second the the when we force assess somebody the listing period's passed they're not going to come back and list and say oh i have more value yeah okay they may do it the next year but oftentimes they don't and because and, it and even on real estate, sometimes we don't get an appeal because we may be low value. So if we're telling you, 
your value is this, and you say, well, it should mm -hmm. be this, but you're telling me it's this, I'm just going to pay this and let it go. Yeah. So the, there, there, there's a lot of back and forth there. But when we force to sell somebody, they don't come back and list. And often they don't list the next year. Um, so they it, really don't. no, they just yeah, let it ride. That's they just let it ride. So okay. the, the, situa okay. the situation the here is is twofold. The state doesn't exempt. The state qualifies the property. They have to apply for exemption with the county, and then we approve the exemption. And they didn't do either one. Nor did they list the property when they acquired it over. If you went back 20 years, I'm sure there's pro a lot of property that was acquired between 2000 yeah. and 2010 that was not listed. Mm -hmm. Sure. And now we've caught it in the end from 16 to 20. Now, to the penalty discussion, I said 60% of value, I was wrong. If the value discovery generated a $1,000 tax bill, the penalty on that $1,000 on that oldest year is going to be $600 mm -hmm. because it's 60%. Mm -hmm. So that's why the penalties add up. Okay. So the whole point of the audit is to bring a company or taxpayer into compliance. So then that's the original tax bill that got mailed out. Mm -hmm. You can see that the, the penalties, yep. which is on the taxes, right. is that amount. But mm -hmm. all of this is the original tax bill. So you're talking about $27,000 in original taxes. And they've been paying that at least for the last... No, they, no. They they, this is the paying. discovery. They've only been paying, paying this. That amount. Yes. Or the value. In that, that value. That's the value. Yeah. So yeah, multiply yeah. that by the taxes. They're, yeah. they're paying, uh -huh. I, got I think when I looked at the taxes in the ballpark of like $1,500 in taxes. Mm -hmm. Back back to 2010. Okay. But, you know, when we audited them, we realized, we, we discovered all of this property that they weren't listing. Yeah. So the question at hand for today is, what's the board's decision on the taxpayer's request to compromise this bill? Our recommendation is the penalty, but it's up to the board to go beyond that or less than. So. And I'm okay with that. Just kind of recognizing there appears to be, and they, it, I think they've rectified it some a little bit of dysfunction well, well, how that stuff was being handled in their office. Well, we'll and wait I, till next year to see if they kind of remember it or not. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've been working with them this year. Yeah, okay. they'll, be, they'll be good moving forward. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We're, we're getting there. But I mean, I, uh, the county's had all the discussion with them. I mean, it, it, it okay. appeared to me there was some true dysfunction there on. Oh yeah, how oh, yeah. To they, that they stuff. were very. I mean, we we tried multiple times to get a hold of somebody and yeah. and work through these issues. Okay, right. I mean. So we're still just basically dealing now with the issue of do we want to waive the late our first motion? Ben, you, you mentioned the, the what you first motion is a rule to do anything. anything. You, okay. If yeah. you're going to knock anything off of it, it's going to be the late list. That is that is our typical recommendation. Yes. Okay. And we can do a percentage of it or not, you know, the whole thing. You can do a, whatever. It, it, when you compromise a tax bill, you have the ability to compromise any and all, any portion or all of that tax bill. Okay. For a discovery only. Okay. You cannot do that for a regular tax bill, but you have that ability for a discovery. How much is the interest on that? Twenty-three hundred. Interest is irrelevant. Yeah. It's about two thousand. But that's because that's, that's going to adjust based, based on, on how much, period. if any, we forgive the county for you. Okay. Well, I, I make a motion that we eliminate the late list fee. Okay. Okay, so just like with the far farmer, yes, the motion is to waive the late list penalties on the discovery tax yeah, Which bill. is approximately $13,000, right? And, and that is the $13,000. 13 to and change. 23 yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So I have that motion. Do I have a you don't need to, You don't need to specify a dollar amount. When you okay. say waive late list penalty, we'll take it all, all right. off. Okay. All right. So we have a wait. I second. We've got a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign motions carried to waive the late list fund. And and just like with the farmer, this is one time. Yep. One and we time. make a note in the system that these penalties were, were waived. And we'll and yeah, y'all keep it in the system so we know yes. if it comes back. I think oh, I'm, believe me, we do. I'm like, mm -hmm. Y'all keep up with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Grant, I can't I'm getting old, but I don't know.
And believe you've already taken a motion on item four. So yeah, we already yeah. voted for Mr. Kaziah to waive his late list penalty, so that ends the agenda for today, gentlemen. We do have a meeting next Wednesday. Um, I will not be here. I'm taking my daughter to a softball camp, so I will uh, I will be absent next week. Okay. And there's a chance I might not be here either. I know I told you I would be here on the 15th. My wife's having her hip replaced on Monday, the 13th. So. Depend on I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to be in New York. Yeah. Okay. So, so we need to make sure that Thomas is here. He's yeah. Here. If our other, if our new member is here, he should be here next week. I right. said so we would have a majority with three Thomas, of y'all. Myself and Mike. Yeah. yeah. I, but mine's, you know, it's going to be. But I think we only have two right now for next week. Maybe three. Right, and it's and it's Moser, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. If she's, yeah. It's what? Stay it's Moser. Okay. We have commercial property next week. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Let's talk about the agenda for next week. What is it? We have two commercial pieces of property that are under appeal. And you said it was the Moser Group? Moser Corp, yeah. yeah. Moser Group. Is that the one like near Sun Valley and yes. stuff like that? Yes. I think I remember that one. If I, if I recall I correctly, the, the property is around Sun Valley. Part of it is. The other part's the other out. Is solving yeah. The Q, whatever they call it's the new apartment complex there in front of um, Carolina Courts, right? Yeah, well, it's by the apartments and kind of behind the Taco Bell there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kind of have to look back in the woods so you can see the apartments. <laughs> okay. So you're gone and you might not be here. Okay. That's all. Yeah, okay. that's the change. A motion to adjourn. Okay. Make a motion that we adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 And we are adjourned. Yeah.